I'd like to get deep into the motion of these oscillators and the scanning, so let's take a look at the left oscillator number one for a moment. We can see the speed is set to a reasonable speed so that we can see that scan going back and forth. I have control, in addition to the speed and the looping, of the start point of where the scan begins, something called the midpoint, and then the end point where the scan ends. The way this is going to work is that I set the end point, let's set it all the way at the end, and I'm going to set the midpoint right in the middle so we can see it. And we'll set the start point all the way at the beginning, so we're getting the full spectrum of the wave. What you're going to notice is when I hit a note, or I hold a chord, hit a several notes, the wave is going to start at the start point, it's going to go through, past the midpoint, it's going to hit the end point, and if loop is on, it's going to start to bounce back only it's not going to bounce back all the way to the beginning. It's going to use that midpoint, and it's going to bounce just between the mid and the end. Take a look. So I can actually control the looping section, and that's what this is, isn't it? Imagine a sample looper, where you have a start of a sample, but then you have a looped section of the sample. The looped section of the sample doesn't necessarily have to be the whole sample. You could start from a different place. If I want it to loop the whole sample, then what I would do is I would take that midpoint and start it all the way back to the beginning. So now, it goes all the way back to the midpoint, which is the beginning anyway. But if I don't want it to loop the entire sample, I just want it to loop part of it, I can change that midpoint to somewhere, and if I change it towards the end, we're going to hear very little fluctuation. Because that end is already very sine wavy. I move it back to the beginning, you hear it getting more and more into that square wave territory. So that's what that start, mid, and end is, and you can use the speed to adjust how fast it's doing that. Now if you want to simulate some granular, then what you would do is you're adjusting the size of the grain, you'd want the grain to be smaller, so you decide where you want it to be. So let's make a nice small grain right there and we're using just that part and the speed is how fast it's going in there and just adjusting that and if I kept the start and the mid close together you would get a true granular type sound of course it's better to do granular stuff on a more complex wave so let's flip over to this complex wave we'll set the start point and the start points at 15 we'll set the midpoint also at 15 and then the end, we're going to set really close to the start point. We're going to freeze one moment in time. Let's use 18, and we'll set the speed nice and high. And how big the grain is will depend on how, where my end point is. So you can get some really cool stuff. You're taking a snapshot of that sound and you're using it as your sound. When you start feeding this thing, if you feed it complex orchestral sounds, a full string section or something, you can really get some rich content, some cool stuff in there, and just by adjusting your start, mid, and end. Again, it's not necessarily what the synth was designed to do from the beginning, but it's just cool that you can get granular out of this if you want. Or if you want to use the full complement, you can have it scan through the wave and... get some cool things that way. Lots of ways to manipulate the oscillators in Codex to get some really unique results.